Ian Duncan Smith said, luck is great, but most of life is hard work. For example, you're watching Curious About Careers and I'm your host, Tashi Dema. E-commerce is the buying and selling of goods and services or transmitting data and funds over an electronic network, primarily through the internet. There are many advantages of e-commerce, such as cost reduction, price and product comparison, faster buying process, and different modes of payment. One of the best examples of e-commerce in our country is Ajapasa. This online market platform provides goods and services to its customers, which makes daily tasks more easy and convenient. Today, we have the founder of Ajapasa, Mr. Kille Wanchu, popularly known as Kanchu. Thank you for being on the show. I'm happy to be here. And please tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself. My name is Kille Wanchu. Uh, friends call me Kanchu. Now everybody calls me Kanchu. When I was a kid, uh, one of my favorite pastime was uh, going through the garbage, scavenging broken toys and electronic gadgets. I'll take them back home and make toys, you know, break it down and build it back up. And uh, the adults would uh, find it demeaning. Then in high school, I wanted to become a rock star. I dropped one of my subjects just so that I could find time to go to the library and uh, study music. Then I finally went over to India to do engineering. I came back, worked as an engineer with Tomde, Timpu Tomde. Back then it was Timpu City Corporation. I worked for four years and I wasn't happy. Although, you know, I enjoyed the work, but I wasn't happy as such. So I resigned and I started a radio station called Radio Valley. Like I said, I wanted to become a rock star. I loved music. And uh, I wanted to also play in a band. And there wasn't a venue, so then I started uh, Mojo Pakla. After that, uh, many things happened. Uh, I did so many things. Some have failed. Some are still doing well or just surviving. And my recent venture is Ajapasa, which is an e-commerce store. La. And uh, Sibjam. Sibjam is also e-commerce, but uh, we only deal with local farm produce. La. Not a lot of people think I'm a businessman. I think I'm not a businessman because if I was a businessman, I would be doing way better. And uh, I like to think of myself as an artist who uses business as uh, the canvas to express myself. Uh, rather, I like to solve problems. Like if I see a problem, I like to make that my problem. And that's why it's called Ajapasala. Everybody's problem is our problem. It seems like you are a man of many traits and talents. But uh, today we'll be talking about Ajapasa specifically. Yes. So what inspired you to come up with that idea? In 2018, or, or could have been 19, my, my wife was pregnant with my uh, second child and uh, the garbage truck would hardly show up. Even if they did, they show up at like odd hours and most of the time I was at work, my wife was not in the position to throw the garbage. It was just two of us and our daughter. And that really bothered me. It was very frustrating. And I thought maybe there are other people who are also going through that and I couldn't stand that. And I thought I'll develop an app through which uh, somebody with my problem can use it and just call upon somebody to throw my garbage and, uh, and pay him for his service. And that was how it began, Ajapasa. And uh, we went on for maybe a year. It was more or less, it wasn't making any profit as such, but uh, I was happy that we were able to uh, cater to people who had similar problems. And uh, when the pa pandemic came in, that's when we pivoted or we evolved and we started to do a little bit of e-commerce, you know, uh, listing services, listing few products. And uh, it was the first lockdown actually, because of the restrictions created by the, the lockdown, we 
had no access to fresh uh, vegetables and the farmers, their vegetables were rotting in the field and we, Ajapasa, we stepped in and we could uh, deliver uh, fresh vegetables to about more than 1,000 households. La. And that was what inspired me to take it further. And uh, from the first lockdown until the second lockdown, we did some uh, vegetable delivery and all that. But uh, I wasn't very happy with the response that we were getting. And again, then the second lockdown happened. And that time, we totally evolved ourselves and uh, made it a full-fledged e-commerce store. And so in March 2021, we launched our platform as an e-commerce store. And that was the reason why uh, we are e-commerce store now. Mm -hmm. It was because of the COVID and also because uh, e-commerce is the future in Mewala. You don't have to go to a shop to check that that shop doesn't have the product, you know. Back then it was like that. You had to go all over the place. You can just browse and see who has the product. And also, main purpose is to solve a problem. The market uh, place is inefficient. Service delivery is not up to the standard that a customer should deserve, actually. <laughs> Our customer service is very bad. We have that gonba mongonja attitude, which I feel it's wrong. And uh, yeah, basically to solve these uh, problems and to fill, fill in the gaps that there are in the market. Thank you. So uh, what were some of the initial challenges that you faced while starting Ajapasa? The first one would be not everybody is, uh, how do I put it, IT savvy, you know, gadget savvy. They don't know how to download the app in the first place, even if they know how to download the app to maneuver it or to to go about it, to be able to use it, it's, it's a problem. Uh, the second challenge is, it's a culture that ha has never been there. So it takes time for people to actually say, that, oh, this is something that uh, is useful for me. And the third one is, we ventured into a business. And I suppose that's why it's a startup. It's a, it's a startup and I'm an entrepreneur because it's a very strange business to us. You know, nobody did it and we, and we did not know how to do it. The process was basically trial and error, you know. So those were, were the, the challenges. And of course, later on as we grew, we were very capital intensive because when people, if something works, people order like hundreds of pieces or even thousands. We sold uh, more than 700 heaters last winter, la, that shindle heater. So now to buy 700 heaters or 1,000 heaters at this and keep it in stock, it's, it's very capital intensive. La. So these are, are the challenges and to a certain extent, some of the challenges we could overcome, but some are still there, la. especially the capital problem is still there. Yes. Uh, so talking about uh, the financial aspect of yes. your business, I'm sure all entrepreneurs might be wondering how to go about it, yes. like when it comes to getting some financial assistance so how did you manage it for me the good thing was i had a travel agency which basically is my my wife's travel agency was doing well before the covid there was some cash that uh, we saved up i pumped all of that in the business she's not very happy about it and then we ran out of funds again uh, I started borrowing from friends, you know, that's how I, I raised the fund. And recently I've started uh, looking for investors. I did manage to raise a couple of lakhs uh, from Japchur uh, program, organized by the BCCI and RMA. And uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, my investors for that, uh, that trust and faith in me to grow together most of them were all uh, Bhutanese working abroad. I would recommend somebody to not to basically bootstrap it. Uh, you call it bootstrapping where you use your own money, your own energy, your sister's energy and time, your brother's energy, your wife's energy and time to do that and, and, uh, and grow your business rather than asking for money straight away and putting, yourself, putting yourselves in uh, under debt and yeah, recommend not to do it. I don't really go after profit. Uh, 
I think profit should be the outcome of what you do and what you, what you should be doing is something that you're passionate about, something you love. And, uh, you know, these days, uh, some people ask me, especially my, my relatives, when they realized that I was very good with the travel business, you know, and making a lot of money, why did you not do it in the first like, place? They don't understand that it was my 10 years of struggles, my 10 years of experience running a radio station, my 10 years of uh, the networking, my 10 years of <coughs> putting my heart into what I believe in that taught me the skills and what is required. I always say that uh, life is always about giving and taking, be it with brother and a sister or customer and a business or teacher and a student. You give and take, give and take. I believe that the more you give, the more you get. And if between two people, father and son, if the son wants to give the best to, the most to his father and the father also wants to do the same, you can only grow. Same with uh, the, way I, the way I approach my business. La. Even with uh, the guests we have, I try to give my best. Some people actually say that you're being an ajapasa again. <laughs> but because of that, they, they go out of their way to recommend other people to, to us and also uh, leave good reviews which drive in more traffic to the uh, website and to us. La. So for a man and a company that's driven by passion, oh, how do you keep yourself inspired? Except for the travel. The travel was turned out to be quite easy. And Radio Valley was the same. Because again, we were venturing into something that uh, nobody did. We had to learn how to do it ourselves. I was the sweeper, I was the technician, I was the radio host, uh, I was the producer. Now, if talking about Ajapasa, there were so many times I actually felt that I should, shouldn't have started, that I should have just kept that savings we had and survived the, the pandemic. So many times I thought about it and so many times I also thought about would there be anybody who would want to buy it because I actually built it up, I, I built a team. So many times I thought about it and every now and then still I do think about it. Every time there is a, a problem that I cannot solve such as capital. Abroad, you have a great idea or the entrepreneur behind the business is uh, somebody reliable and you know, people are ready to pump in their money and, and make things work. But over here, this I don't really blame our society, but this is a culture in the business industry that we haven't yet uh, experienced. So I always land up putting myself in things like uh, <coughs> radio station, la. we have to survive on ad advertisements. A advertisement on the radio was a very new culture back then. People couldn't really understand that. And I had to give them free slots. You know, I'll do it for free and just see whether your sales improve or not. And slowly I had to build a, a customer base like that. La. So I always land up putting myself in these uh, difficult situations where I really don't have a market, but I want to do it just for, just because I believe and I feel that I should do it. But you are paving a new way for other people, you know, by you venturing into e-commerce. Mm. Maybe others will get inspired by what you are doing. Well, I hope so. And that is one of the best rewards that I can get out of doing something. Uh, like I said, not necessarily profit. Uh, I want to be able to make a difference. I want to be able to inspire people, want to make lives easier for people. And that is one of the biggest reward that I get and uh, very satisfied with whatever I've done so far. Uh, Mojo Park, if I give you an example, uh, people are now making a living out of playing music. Back then, forget making a life out of playing music. You didn't even have a space to play music. Uh. So these are very rewarding uh, and I'm I'm very uh, happy with it and if people ask me if I'm successful, these will be the reasons why I would say I'm successful. Like, even though the moment the month ends, I have to start scratching my head. So it's great that you have started new avenues, different business mm -hmm. ideas and now people are getting all the opportunities from what you started. Yeah. So definitely it is the biggest perk that you get. Mm -hmm. So talking about Ajapasa now, um, 
So what are the strategies that you use for your business? Because nowadays there are a lot of competitors. So what makes you different? What we do right now is an e-commerce store. I would like to think of it more. I'm trying to create a brand and you never know where it'll go. Amazon wasn't selling what they are selling right now. It started with books. Uh, same with uh, Netflix was into DVD rentals, I think, and then they went uh, out, uh, streaming. So Ajapasa, I won't really say that it will always be an e-commerce store. I, I, I really don't know where it will take us. And uh, as far as the difference, it's a, it's a very interesting question. We are here with a purpose. La, and uh, the first purpose being it's very expensive for anybody to live in Thimpu. I have about 25 or 6 team members. Uh, I always tell them, how do you guys survive with the salary? And I, I really want to you know, pay them well, but the thing is, it has to go with what we earn as well. So, I, so anyways, uh, it's very difficult to survive and 70 to 80 percent of our salary goes into house rent. With the 20, what do you do? I mean, you, you have to survive with it. And we, we want to try to bring down the cost of goods. La. And I think it is possible. If people understand us, it is very possible. La. The reason why it's once we start playing a volume game, imagine once everybody buys their glass from us, because we're playing a volume game, it will definitely go down. La. And this is not, and it will not be mon monopoly. Monopoly is something that I, I'm the one selling, I will raise it. But the reason I will go down is because everybody is buying from me. So it's the other way around. The second reason or the purpose or wh what we stand for is uh, we want to create a culture where an organization puts people before anything else. When I say people, customer, to give them the due respect because a business exists only because of the customer. And sometimes they are not treated the way they should be. And uh, when I say people, I'm also talking about uh, teammates. La. Actually, it is not me making money. It is the whole team together making money for Ajapasa or doing business on behalf of Ajapasa. La. So in that way, uh, yes, uh, to create a culture and inspire people to take care of people better in general, including our society and our community. La. And thirdly, to be able to uh, spread values and inspire people into making our country better than the rest and also be a business that is mindful. I, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, to be a mindful business, to be a mindful startup where whatever you do, that you're aware of its implications and it's, uh, there's always cause and effect. Mula. Like for instance, uh, we never use single-use plastic bags. Uh, we use jute bags and paper bags. Very expensive, but uh, we want to start this culture. Uh, we also, every Thursday, it's been about four months, I think. La. Every Thursday, we go and clean our surroundings. And the reason why we're doing it is hoping that it will inspire people, businesses to, to do it, organizations to do it, like, uh, I, I heard that uh, there was a foreigner who came to Bhutan and he came as, I think, a consultant or something like that. And he said, I really like your philosophy, development philosophy of gross national happiness. But I've been here for a while and what I noticed is, in order for gross national happiness to thrive, each and every organization should be doing something about it. What are they doing? Each and every family should be doing something about that. What are they doing? Each and every person should be doing something about GNH. What are they doing? And that really, really struck me. And from that day onwards, uh, I tried to be mindful about that. And whatever I do or whatever my business does, I try to incorporate a little bit of GNH in it. And with us trying to promote uh, or trying to do the cleaning campaign and make raise awareness on uh, waste problem. It's just trying to make, put GNH in our business. La. I think that's what an ideal Bhutanese citizen should be like. Yeah. Every one of us yes. should be Thank you, like, we should all try to incorporate GNH in our daily lives, in our habits. Email, 
in our family yes, units ma'am. and in our work. Yes. So that's a very beautiful message Thank and you, a mindset that you have. You. So talking about the people, you have a lot of people working for you. So uh, how do you recruit them? Because we are a startup, we don't have the time and, and the resources to train them like the way the corporate offices do here. But I personally do give them, uh, I guide them, I, I do give them a little training. I groom them even to think better. So what we do is we either float uh, an announcement saying that we, we, need, uh, or we need to hire people and or I go look for recommendations from other people. I have a good team now and that took me two years to build. And for any startup or for any business, I think the team is the most important aspect of the business. Apart from the reputation and the brand we could build, I think the profit I made was I managed to build a good team. And to, to build that good team, I have to kiss a lot of uh, frogs. <laughs> Today we employ three, pe uh, three people. In a, in a matter of days, they, they resign. And this is very disheartening and, and sad that, uh, and I, I, I decided this is a culture, a Bhutanese culture, a thinking culture that we are not, we, we have a problem. They do not honor the signature that they have signed, that they, they, they will work with uh, a certain company for maybe six months or one year or whatever. They don't do that. They're always after short term goals, which is anytime you get a better offer, which could be maybe, maybe your house is nearer to that workplace, you resign and go. And I think this is very bad for them and uh, I always tell them but somehow I don't know this is something I think we as a, as a country we need to uh, think about but yeah that's that's how we how we uh, recruit people and uh, when it comes to trainings and all that Thursdays uh, after the cleaning campaign the other half of the day we do team building sessions and and all that and I also invite some of my friends uh, entrepreneurs uh, inspiring figures to come talk to my, my team so that they will think the long-term goal and not the short-term problem. Uh, we get carried away too much because of short-term problem. Uh, if I give you an example, uh, sometimes my team members tell me that uh, we are having difficulty surviving, sustaining. It is because our margin is too less. Why are you, why are you doing this? And I think this is a very short term just to survive and not really think about long term, just to survive that one month or two month. What happens after that? We will lose out or our brand will get diluted. What we stand for will get diluted. This is just to survive one or two months, but it can't go that way. I think, and I tell them, you have to think out of the box. Why just sell one type of glass? Let's go for two types of glass and try to sustain or make money by thinking out of the box, by adding more value to what we sell and not straight away, that's the straightforward answer to the Mewa Mula. Increase your margin. And I think that's a short term that I was talking about. It's a short term solution, but in the long term, it's not going to help us with what we are trying to do. Mm, so definitely, the, we the need purpose to gets defeated, Mula, trying to bring down the cost. Yeah. Of course, not all products, some products are. It's all going to be expensive. I can, <laughs> I will never be able to sell your iPhone for fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. very at a very reasonable cost. You will yes, try to provide yes, the services and yeah. the goods. In fact, we did. Uh, I uh, when we in two thousand twenty one, iPhone twelve was the back then. It was iPhone twelve. It was selling at uh, ten to fifteen thousand more than what we were selling at, and the iPhone rate sudden all came down. La. And I can give you the example of gas cylinders. La. When we started doing gas cylinder delivery service, the delivery service fee was 150. And I thought to myself, this is too much because a person taking a taxi from point A to B back then from tower to town was 100. So I said it should be 100 because if a taxi can make money out of dropping somebody from tower to Town for 100, I think gas cylinder should also be, if not less, it should be uh, 100. And uh, everybody brought down their rates. And in s even last winter, it was because of our 
our competition that the Shinil heater, when it started off, it was at 9,500. With all that competition going on, we brought it down to, to 8,000. So eventually, who benefits? And there are so many other examples la, that uh, we came in and we competed on the price front. And after some time, it stays at a point where it is good for everybody with the And I think that should be the price, Mula. Yes, definitely. We want the businesses to make a little profit yes, at least. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we also don't want the customers to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to goods, mm. you're dealing mostly with imports right now. So yes, do you have any plans to export? My main goal with this is to take to export. La. Import, we're only doing it to understand the business better and easier also. Export now, we're, we're not to a certain extent, you know, we're not ready. But uh, I have big plans to go international and attack the international market. Uh, after some time, as you grow, a small fish pond will be a little boring. So international, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, something that I have on mind and we do want to really work towards it. Especially for Sibjam, we want to see if we can uh, not really see. I think there's a mar market for Bhutanese uh, uh, farm produce. Uh, to, to we can export it to India and Thailand, places like that easily. La. And I have uh, a lot of other ideas also and uh, to export Bhutanese uh, f food products. And I also have uh, a t-shirt brand called Karma Korala. Uh, and uh, I have plans with that. I, I want to slowly start with t-shirts and go into textiles and all that, uh, selling textiles, uh, crafts and arts to the international market, including tankers and even, who knows, we might get into NFTs, which is basically digital assets. Uh, well, I'm sure that the Bhutanese living abroad might be looking forward to that mm -hmm. business idea. So you are the owner of multiple companies. How do you manage it? It's stressful and I have to learn the hard way had to do a lot of reading and all that. But the good thing about reading is uh, when you read, you, you can see a problem before it comes. And uh, for an entrepreneur, the biggest asset they say is the entrepreneur himself. And his mental health and his uh, health is very important, Mevala. So I've come to, before I used to be very uh, particular about things, I've stopped micromanaging. I don't uh, put my hands in everything. I let the managers take care of it. And all of my businesses, most of them actually, are. I don't even have, I don't have much to do apart from taking big, big decisions. I delegate, I give them, give people uh, all the power and the authority that they need. I trust them and uh, I let them, I let them take care of the businesses. Uh, so that's why, again, I, I always try to focus on working on building a team. La. When you have a team, then you can be staying at home and doing nothing and oh, it moves on its own. Mevala. So whatever I do, I always, first thing is always building a team, building a team. And I learned the, the hard way. La. I, I, two times uh, I got too stressed with anxiety and all that. I had to take off for months just to recuperate. So with, with all that experiences I went through and the stress I went through, now I always focus on building team, team, team. It's, uh, even if, if it comes down to calling them to my place and teaching them like A, B, C, D, like that, I, I do that. Well, it's great though. From what I have read about the good characteristics of a great leader, yes. I think you exhibit it. <laughs> Thank you exhibit you, almost <laughs> all of, <laughs> all you, of it. You believe in your team, you have faith, you delegate work, yes. you give them responsibilities mm. and you have trust in them. So I think you are the best person in this position to give advice to Thank the you young la. people. You. Yes. People who might be, you know, thinking about uh, starting a business in the e-commerce or me generally mm. trying to figure out what to do with their lives. Yes. So what advice would you like to give to them? Well, uh, I get asked this question a lot and uh, I always talk about the same. Recently, I, I watched the TED talk and uh, there also it kind of uh, talked about it. This lady, what she did was she studied people and she studied what kind of people become successful. 
and uh, her finding was it is grit, grit that makes somebody successful. Most entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs give up, they give up so easily because that's the easiest thing that anybody can do, mewala. Again, that is again solving a short-term problem, mewala. If you continue staying for one month, or two months, maybe things might change a little bit. So in that way, I, I t always tell my story that when I went to study engineering, I did not enjoy a day. I, in fact, the first day I cried, but I said, I'm going to complete this. And I decided I'm going to complete my four years here and then go back home and do whatever I want to do with my life. So that, that four years of completing it became actually quite attractive because I said, I'm going to do whatever I want to do because I'll be taking home a degree certificate. Nobody can tell me because I have a degree certificate. The day I graduated was the happiest day of my life. I said, now I'm, I can do whatever I want to do. So having gone through that uh, four years of difficulty, struggle, now anything that comes and I need to overcome it, it cannot be as difficult as the four years in India. You see, and you are able to take risk. You are able to think about the long term vision because the short term solution to my problem in India was give up. But I didn't give up and I focus on my long term saying that after I get myself a degree, nobody can tell me what needs to be done. If I don't have a degree, they might uh, say a lot of things. Uh, you drop out in low, yai low, my low, so afi below, ani below. But I focus on my long term vision, which is to get a degree, go back home and do whatever I want to do with my life. And because of that, now I am habituated to always think about the long term solution. And because of that, uh, I think I am more of a risk taker. I have more patience. I don't give up. There are so many times I felt like uh, selling Mojo Park, my share. So many times I felt like I should shut down Radio Valley. So many times, la. but I think it's these experiences that makes you gritty. And, and when I watched the t TED talk, I could relate it to myself and uh, don't give up. Good things happen when you stay put for a longer duration. In fact, I, I tell my team members that even if you don't like it and you hate this place, just stay and execute your promise or whatever you've agreed to. Good things happen out of it. La. And the other thing is, uh, for young entrepreneurs and producers, or even if you're in the trading business, wholesalers, where Ajapasa, we're very open to collaborating and, and uh, helping each other out. La. So you're more than welcome to get in touch with us. We are already collaborating with so many, so many uh, entrepreneurs and, and traders. La. Well, that's a great initiative, oh, and thank I you. hope many come forward to collaborate with you. And thank you once again for taking out the time to be here. I'm happy to be here. This is very good for me <laughs> and Ajapasala. <laughs> thank you, BBS, in fact. And to all the viewers who want to collaborate with Ajapasa or maybe check out their goods and services, you can visit Ajapasa's website or check out their social media handles. Thank you for watching.